I'm never more me than when I receive you. I'm never more free in the things that I do. Keep my heart and mind and will in communion with you still. I'm never more me. Take my eyes off me and turn my heart toward you. I find the peace in praise. Your kingdom's everything. This adoring heart longs for the presence of the King. I'm never more me than when I receive you. I'm never more free in the things that I do. Keep my heart and mind and will in communion with you still. Yourself to me, a miracle. Heaven meets my soul. Take my body given, broken now for you. The chalice of my saving blood poured out to make things new. I'm never more me. Still, I'm never more me. Never more me. be Jesus Christ, now and forever. God is acting in us and through us. In our changing world, the truth of his word and the gift of his holy Eucharist nourish us in the kingdom of God. We gather as the body of Christ, foremost to give God glory and to offer all that we are back to him and in so doing, our Lord fills us. Today we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in ordinary time. Let's not be distracted by mask or distancing or anything. Also, please turn off or silence all electronic devices so that nothing takes away from God's holy and powerful word being spoken to each of us in this holy mass. 
Please, after giving God glory and receiving him, let's go forth alive in the kingdom, but avoid gathering in the commons. This is temporary and will pass. Welcome to anyone who is visiting or would like to belong to this community of faith. Please contact the parish office with your desire to belong. And now let us be still as all angels and saints in heaven adore and praise Jesus, life-giving sacrifice. Let us see what they see, give what they give, receive what they receive, and become one with them. God's holy presence moves us in true worship to do so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and communion in the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the church is God's mystical body. Christ is the kingdom in and through time. For the past 2,000 years on earth, for the past 244 years in the United States, as our creator, our bounty, our redeemer, and the Diocese of Richmond celebrates throughout the diocese this weekend 200 years of the Lord's presence working in and through 200 years of blessing and hardship, of kingdom and kingdom resistance. We call to mind our sins 
we enter into the sacred, saving mysteries of Christ. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us glorify God as the angels and saints give him glory. So do the faithful who are alive in Christ and moving through this earthly world. Glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you and we bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit. The Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, who sent your Son into the world as the true light, pour out, we pray, the Spirit he promised to sow seeds of truth constantly in people's hearts and to awaken in them the obedience to the faith so that being born to new life through baptism, all may become part of your one people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judea and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above all the hills. All nations shall stream towards it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not rise the sword against another, nor shall they train for a war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Their message goes out through 
heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims the work of his hands. Day, day unto day conveys the message, and night unto night imparts the knowledge. Their message goes out through all the earth. No speech, no word whose voice goes unheeded. Their sound goes forth through all the earth. Their message to the utmost bounds of the world. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but Jews. There were some Cypriots and Cyrenians among them, however, who came to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks as well, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. The news about them reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and encouraged them all to remain faithful to the Lord in firmness of heart, for he was a good man filled with the Holy Spirit and faith. And a large number of people was added to the Lord. Then he went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year they met with the church and taught a large number of people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. 
Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise It is deep, it's discomforting, and it's dangerous. It is not subjective or segmented or self-righteous. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I'm talking about Jesus himself. Jesus is the kingdom of God. It's a deep reality that's got to impact and sink into a human soul through the flesh, in spite of the culture, in spite of the politic, in spite of the world spinning. The eternal Son of God, born in time, born into human flesh, 2,000 years of deep, discomforting and dangerous Christian living in a world that never accepted him in the first place. 2,000 years of a kingdom that is not subjective, not segmented, and certainly not self-righteous. Let's unpack some of that. The readings today. This one, these readings are beautiful. These are the readings for this bicentennial weekend across the Diocese of Richmond. These are not the readings, if you have your missal with you, of the 32nd Sunday of ordered time. Has anyone noticed that? We should have told you that ahead of time, huh? So at home, Please know that these are very special readings chosen for every parish in the Diocese of Richmond, celebrating not 2,000 years, but 200 years of Christ working in the geography that comprises the Diocese of Richmond. From the Cumberland Gap to the Chesapeake Bay, And 200 years of really interesting oppression of the Catholic Church and prejudice against the Catholic Church and weakness within the Catholic Church. And in spite of it, 200 years celebrated across the diocese this weekend. It's the kingdom of God at hand. It's a deep reality. It's a discomforting one. It's a dangerous one. Ask Joan of Arc in that window, or Father Maximilian Kolbe in that window, or Maria Goretti in that window, or Jose Sanchez del Rio in that window, or Abraham there, or Saint Elizabeth, John's mother, pregnant with John. Imagine that, that's a baby in her womb. We should tell our culture, I think, and the power people. And her son grown up next to her. Yes, it's like the before and after shot. John the Baptist, beheaded because he speaks the kingdom in a world that never accepted the king. And we still do. And Longinus, who thrust the spear into Christ's side? Doesn't the world do that? Doesn't our culture do that? Doesn't our culture do that? 
Isn't it a bit disconcerting to have this deep reality of Christ in us, and yet it's very discomforting because we know the world that rejected him rejects anyone who is alive in him. And guess what? That's why people pretend to be alive in him. That's why people pretend. The laity sometimes pretends. Even workers in the church sometimes pretend. The kingdom is not subjective. It's not something I make up. It's not segmented. I can't have, uh, I'm, I'm Catholic in private, but not in public. In this circumstance, but not that circumstance. And it is certainly not self-righteous. Self-righteous means I am the one who makes things right according to me. I'm the one who saves me. Jesus is our righteousness. Unpack these scriptures with me, okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that we are talking about 2,000 years of Christianity and planet Earth, 200 years in the Diocese of Richmond, 244 years as the United States of America, pretty much accepting the God who is recognized our creator, endowing every single human being, no matter what color, what race, what creed, with the God-given rights of life and liberty, liberty and the pursuit of happiness, shining the Christian light on that, the sanctity of human life from womb to tomb, from conception to death. And if you have a hard time with that, because some people are a bit small-minded and say, boy, you pro-life people are single issue. Yes, we are. Our single issue is God. That's our single issue. That's our single issue. And if it helps to work it backward, you can start in the grave and work backward into old, feeble, into midlife, into youth, and back into the womb and back to conception if that helps people. Deep, discomforting, and dangerous living out Christ in true, loving reality. Certainly not subjective. Certainly not segmented, certainly not self-righteous. Let's unpack all that. These, these readings are beautiful. Jesus appeared to the 11. Okay, He's, he was crucified on Friday. It's Sunday. He appears to the 11. Or 50 days later. You know, he, he appears certainly on Easter Sunday. Now with this sending forth, as it were, With this instruction, go into the whole world and you proclaim the gospel to every creature. Hey, Christ is the gospel. The king is the kingdom. The king is the gospel. We are not, we are not passing out the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times, rolling it, up, rolling it up and throwing it on people's porches. Christ is the gospel that must be preached. Guess what? I like that kid. The kid goes, what? This is what? This is what happens when the king preaches the kingdom. That's what happens. You are now the body of Christ. Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. And perhaps, perhaps we've taken that way for granted, right? We become a little lukewarm about it. We become a little too lackadaisy, a little too slothful about it, a little too comfortable. And what happens? Now the kingdom is barely discernible. And just because a particular government may have appealed to some and made it a little more easy to sleep back and swing in your Catholic hammock, guess what? Keep swinging in that hammock and you are eternally dorming. Go and preach the gospel and whoever believes in it and is baptized will be saved. That notion of being saved needs to be unpacked. There's a gratitude to Christ for saving me from eternal damnation. There's a gratitude, there's a love, there's an all in, there's a zeal. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. Try to preach that out there. 
Good luck. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. By, by who? By himself, by herself. You throw someone a, a life jacket who's drowning in the middle of the river and they push the life jacket away, whose fault is it? And signs will accompany all those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. Hey, doesn't that sound powerful? How about this, though? Oh, my goodness. Lord, you mean to tell me I'm going to be confronting demons? Uh, hello? They will speak new languages. Folks, we're not merely talking about Espanol and Francais and Italiano. The language of Christ is a spiritual language. The world can't understand it. They think we're nuts. They think we're crazy. They will pick up serpents with their hands. Deadly things. We're going to be surrounded by deadly things. And the serpents walk on two feet sometimes. It's the image of Satan himself. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. He's talking about their soul. He's not talking about our bodies, right? Our bodies are merely dust. Nothing can harm someone who is eternally alive in Christ. They will be Christ in the world and be treated as Christ by the world. As you preach the gospel, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Then the Lord Jesus, after instructing them in this way, was taken up from their sight. But they went forth, but you went forth for 2,000 years. For 200 years, the Diocese of Richmond went forth in spite of her weakness, her bishops, her priests, her laity, her religious sisters and brothers, full of doubt and sin in every way, because it's not us acting. It's Christ Jesus literally acting. And now here is where the rubber hits the road. Recently, very recently, what about six weeks, eight weeks ago, a 15-year-old young guy, kid from Italy, his name is Carlo Acuto. Has anyone ever heard of him? He's a brilliant, brilliant computer nerd. Really popular among his peers. A holy heart. An incisive heart. His last name is really cool. See, God, God sometimes just like layers, layers obvious stuff on top of us because sometimes we don't get the obvious. His last name, Acuto, means sharp incisive, piercing. Isn't that cool? This arrow shot from God's quiver into the dust, the murk, the politic, the competition, the ego, and even within the church. Not just the world. All those things exist in the church. And then this incisive arrow of this young kid shot like a fiery arrow from heaven to set the earth on fire. Not with himself, but with Christ. Deep. Very, very discomforting, this life in Christ. But below the discomfort, right? The discomfort's on the surface. The discomfort is what we experience, right, in this world. But below that discomfort, don't you experience a deeper comfort? like a deeper solace, a deeper certainty. This is being alive in Christ. The second reading, those who had been scattered by the persecution that arose because of Stephen, hey, what was the persecution that arose? They stoned Stephen to death. Those who have been scattered. See, this is cool. So God uses the hardship to spread out the gospel. Otherwise, we would just be comfortable swinging in our Catholic hammock 
or writing, writing documents and writing, you know, notes, thinking, oh, this will evangelize the world. Let me write some more things. Ask these martyrs who surround us in these windows if they only wrote things or if they lived what was written. They lived the gospel. That's our calling. Those who have been scattered by the persecution of Stephen uh, that, uh, that arose because of, of Stephen went as far as Phoenicia, Cy uh, Cyprus, Antioch. They went forth preaching the word. First to no one but Jews. To no one but Jews. Then we realize God breaks through that and begins to reach out to the Greeks as well. Like the whole world is intended to be affected by Christ. But the world, brothers and sisters, if it's not going to accept him, it's not going to accept the gospel. It's not going to accept the carriers of the gospel. And our commission to be Christian, to be Christ bearers. We are told in this uh, second reading today, it's in Antioch that they were called Christians for the first time. En enough blood had been shed, enough imitation of their master, enough being alive in their master and their God that they weren't being called Christian. It's a deep, a discomforting, and a dangerous life taking Christ seriously. It is not, here's what it is, three, it's, it is three D's, right? Deep, discomforting, dangerous. It is not subjective. It is not segmented. It is not self-righteous. Go to the first reading today. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, see, a Christian always has hope. Plenty of people have rejoiced jumping up and down today because of a political turnout that somehow gives them a sense of eternal joy. Let a political turnout give them a sense of eternal joy. There's nothing eternal in it. Plenty of folks have cried tears today. They haven't destroyed anything. They've cried and they've doubted. Christians look to the future in the victory of Christ for the victory that is still still having its day. Jesus is not a political figure. He is a savior. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. The kingdom of God, brothers and sisters, is the high point of human existence in this world, filling us with eternity even as we live here. And all the nations shall stream toward this holy mountain. It's a magnet for all peoples. If they turn away into the dust, this is not God's will. His will is that his house, his presence, union, communion in God is the Lord's will for the human race. And many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways. See, someone who says, Oh, no, no, I can make up my own God, it's my own personal God, that's a subjective ego trip. It happens in the church to people on the far left, if you will to people on the far right, if you will. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about a very deep, discomforting, 
and dangerous life in Christ. And we may, he may teach us his ways and we may walk in his paths. I wonder, I wonder if St. John Paul II or Mother Teresa of Calcutta were to appear into someone, into someone's home who proudly says, look, I am a Catholic and I am pro-choice. I wonder how that conversation would, that argument or that conversation would then ensue. You want to see a humanoid reduced to the state of being mute? Invite St. John Paul II into your home for a conversation if somehow we are outside of Christ's in one moral issue or another, in one theological issue or another. Invite Mother Teresa to sit down and have a one-on-one talk. Invite Sister Faustina. It's amazing how bold we get, conditioned by the culture that teaches us to be subjective and segment our faith from our living. I keep it in a box, or I'm a Catholic in the private, but not in the public. If we want to understand what it is to be totally not self-righteous, put yourself at the Last Supper. Have your God crawling on the floor, washing your sinful, my sinful, dirty feet. And then empowering you and empowering me to be Him in the world, doing the same thing with the same vulnerability, the same deep love, doing the same discomforting living, the same dangerous path, the narrow path, the narrow way into eternity. 2,000 years of Christ in the world, 200 years of Christ in the Diocese of Richmond, 244 years this year as the United States of America, that once acknowledged its founding by a God who is creator and endowing humanity with God's own imprint to pursue life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and to hold in a sacred, sacred high status the dignity of all human life, the sanctity of holy matrimony and family, and the sanctity of religious freedom. It's still God's will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is the life of the world to come. Christ is the kingdom born into the world, born into time. And you and I, alive in Christ, rely on him to accompany us with assurances, 
confirming our words, confirming our lives, confirming our actions in him. We rely on his grace and help in these petitions. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide her in holiness and protect her from all evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God give them the grace to work toward peace among nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bear heavy crosses each day, may God grant them courage and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Diocese of Richmond, in thanksgiving for our 200 years as a diocese and a community of faith, may this celebration continue to be a time for us to ask for God's blessings on all our efforts. And two, guided by the Holy Spirit, may we continue to be a sign and instrument in the world of Christ's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Valerie Gallagher, and for the people of St. Joan of Arc, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray with me, brothers and sisters, for God's anointing afresh, anew, in the form of a grace or lightning into the people he has led to this nation. We pray for our citizenry. We pray for God's will to continue to be done in and through our current president and for God's anointing and decisive will to be done in and through President-elect Joseph Biden. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear us, Heavenly Father, who come to you in and through your Son, who lives and who reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us together pray the bicentennial prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father of lights, the radiance of your Son has guided the advance of the gospel across the Diocese of Richmond for two centuries, strengthening our church from the eastern shore to the Cumberland Gap. Grant that the nearness of your Son may dispel the darkness of our sins so that as our love increases more and more, we may dare more than ever to fearlessly proclaim the word, holding fast to the word of life. May we use, may we shine like stars in the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and who reigns with the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Our love is poured out to the Lord, our Heavenly Father, as Christ pours out his love to the Heavenly Father. His breath, his works, his word, his life offered to the Father, giving the Father glory and redeeming us. Now as Christ's body, we lay ourselves, our entire lives, this diocese on this, offer, on this altar as an offering. And any of our earthly gifts that we place in the basket is a sacrifice to the Lord, is a sign of our spiritual sacrifice on this altar. Now, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. By your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruits of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Now pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Look, O Lord, upon the face of your Christ, who handed himself over as a ransom for all, so that through him, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name may be exalted among all nations, and in every place a single offering may be presented to your majesty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, Lord, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord. Font of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross. Now, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your holy presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in death in the hope of resurrection. Remember Valerie Gallagher, whose birthday into this world we celebrate today, even as you have given her birth into glory. And all those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all especially the faithful of the Diocese of Richmond. Though with Blessed Mary, ever Virgin Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and with all who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command to us, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Not into temptation. Amen. Deliver us, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our day that, with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, who said to his apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sin, look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccato mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccato mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccato mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold our Lord, Jesus, the Agnus Dei, he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul for the Lord. May the body and blood of our Lord keep you and me ever safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. 
Amen. Please meet me here at this table.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, beautiful um, Spiritual activities happening all throughout the week. Monday evening, scripture study with seven deadly sins, seven cardinal virtues. Tuesday, that's at 6.30 for gathering outside, seven o'clock session. It's also available on Zoom. Tuesday is RCIA, again, available in person or on Zoom. And I think he's got like 22 people entering the Catholic faith now in RCIA. Very beautiful stuff. Praise and worship every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Adoration of the Lord, Holy Mass. Um, and this coming Saturday, there is a, um, a really important mini retreat day for all uh, proclaimers of the word at Sacred Liturgy, all readers. Um, so if you are newly on board proclaiming God's word at Mass or you have been a veteran for some years at it, uh, please come. It's very, very important to pray together, refresh together, sharpen together and continue to fall in love and on fire with the word. I want to thank Mike Siptek and, and uh, Patty Kamornik for leading that ministry forward. 10 a.m. on Saturday. Also, I just ask you in a, a deepest sense of the center who is Christ, okay? To please, uh, no matter what your political affiliation and excitement or, or fear happens to be, um, please know, if our citizen is, in, is not in heaven, you're in the wrong place here. Like, we are heaven bound, okay? Um, Jesus lived in the day of Caesar. We're always gonna live in the time of modern day Caesar. Always, always. So pray for our uh, current president and president-elect and Please live out your Catholic faith in a boldness that requires dying and rising. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael, the Archangel. <laughs>
Isn't it funny how a child's game To find the way that we saw and we thought and we worked and played Seeing what's partial in shadows and caves Appearance seems all there is Nothing but faith that can lift The blinders and the veil Not by appearance we see no But in the power and the light of the living God Not by appearance we see no Now the darkness is banished and light is mine In Christ we go Why are so Lord do you bless with such clarity To notice your presence among us pure charity Your saints and your martyrs echo the song of the truth Nothing to lose but to gain Adoring the Lamb who was slain Who pours forth this power and riches and strength Not by appearance we see, no But by the power and the light of the living God Not by appearance we see No Now that darkness is banished And light is mine In Christ we go Oh the boy Jose Darío Never turned from Your name how loud While the girl Maria Goretti Kept your body sound Oh, the fire could not consume Your servant, Joan of Arc Nor the priest named Corey Sacrificed for naught not by appearance they see, no But in the power and the light of the living God Not by appearance they see, no Now the darkness is banished and light is mine Not by appearance we see no, but in the power and the light of the living God, not by appearance we see. 